The challenge that we have is to make sure we don't put too much gas fire generation into this country because at a time when the UK is becoming far more dependent on imported gas, there was the worry in our view that we could end up building too many gas-fired power stations, and that's one of the issues we talked around coal. So in terms of EON's thinking, well, the answer to this one is diversity. We're looking at um, plans for, well, the London Array, which you'll be hopefully aware about in terms of trying to finance that. That's not easy in terms of actually developing those sorts of proposals. We're just one of a number of parties that actually is involving around a gigawatt part of that. The, the, uh, the grain gas-fired power station, which is supplying heat to National Grid's LNG terminal, so it's a huge combined heat and power plant. Up on the right, the plans for New Kings North with CCS, which I'll touch on, and are looking at nuclear at Albury and Wilbur and Anglesey in North Wales. So we're involved in the whole sort of space in terms of each one of those issues brings positive benefits. Some of them have their downsides, but you put the whole lot together, that's the best way you actually have of solving the trilemma. The issue around Kings North, um, it was mentioned earlier on that carbon capture and storage has not been demonstrated because it's not economic. Um, the, the challenge that you have around carbon capture and storage is making sure you have a market that is actually attractive for investors like E.ON to be able to bring forward. And the, the challenge that we've had in the UK is we've actually we've decided that rather than actually fitting carbon capture and storage to the existing old 40-year-old power stations, it was far more sensible to close the existing ones and build a new one and start from scratch. Okay? So that was the logic behind Kings North. And when we've looked at it, one of the things about, um, somebody mentioned the, um, the oil-fired and the gas-fired sectors getting involved in it. There are so many depleted gas fields out in the North Sea. We've virtually like, drunk the North Sea dry in terms of the gas that we've used out there. Now you've got the opportunity to actually put, capture the carbon from the power stations around the southeast and actually put it back into the ground effectively where that carbon came from. Yes, it's expensive to do, um, but we're... We believe that you know, that is, part of, is going to be part of the answer for the trilemma. It has to be part of the global solution because you just have to look around the globe and look at the amount of coal that's going to be burnt in, around this planet. If you can't crack carbon capture and storage, there are clearly bigger issues around. And then just on to the customers. And this is what fascinates this morning. I mean, anybody that listened to sort of Tesco's results this morning, um, I heard Terry Lee here commenting on it, is... Getting individuals to actually take decisions is quite fascinating. And on the left, you can see you know, what's happened as regards you now, the goods that you buy, the fat content, the salt content, and the sugar content. How much of it is going to change your lifestyle when you start to see the carbon footprints in terms of you know, a bag of crisps plus 75 grams of carbon? On its own, that doesn't really mean a lot. But maybe if all of the goods or services that you actually want to buy actually gave you that sort of information, then would it be mainly to, you know, would you change in terms of some of the decisions that you make? It's just an issue to think about. I think, you know, that's the challenge that we have with the small solutions, because if you're going to tackle the whole climate agenda, it's both big and small. You need the big issues around nuclear and carbon capture and storage, and you need the small. Okay, just some thoughts to take away. Just, um, I've gone through that re relatively quickly. First issue... The, the simple message is diversity. It's the issue, it's sort of the mantra of the no silver bullet. No one technology solves the problem. You have to look at the entire, and all of them. Um, E.ON's taken a serious look at solving and at committing this challenge. In fact, the whole energy sector is as well. You know, the EDS as well. Everybody is in this space about saying, we know we've got to do it. The solution is three things. It's large scale. And you'll hear Ed Miliband talk about his trinity issues of nuclear, carbon capture and storage, and renewables. The deployment of small or microgen technologies, it's about actually getting people behind it and wanting to take responsibility for it. We can either provide people low-carbon electricity off the grid, or people can decide to do things around their own homes and their own communities. It needs both of those to be taken forward. One other issue just to be pointing out is this is a very, very complicated space that's beginning to emerge. Energy markets are, aren't simple. What you read in the media in terms of sound bites about renewables are good and sort of coals is bad is, is very simplistic. When you turn the lights on, you just expect it to be here. Behind that is quite a whole complicated set of infrastructure that actually predicts what people are going to do and provides all of that energy. And that's really one of the things that the energy companies have to do. But it needs government, it needs businesses and society to work together to solve this urgent problem.
Thank you very much indeed. Tim, thank you very much indeed for that uh, vision and outlining the challenges that are there for the energy producing companies. Thank you very much.